Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode where we touch upon the various policies present within the Islamic government. In the previous episodes, we have been touching upon the importance of politics within Islam and Islam within politics, deriving our information from the book written by Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi, Politics, the Very Heart of Islam. Like we should on this topic with my dear guest, Dr. Zuhair has joined me once again in tonight's episode. Assalamu alaikum, Doctor. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, one of the key uh, attributes, if you will, or one of the key things within a government that forms a successful government is economics. And how the politician or the head of state manages economics or the Department of Economics or uh, the Parliament how they manage economics determines the success or the failure of uh, a certain government. a certain uh, government. In terms of Islamic economics, did Islam succeed in economics or did it fail? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Indeed, uh, Islam succeeded uh, um, uh, in uh, in its economic policies, uh, to the extent that people lived, the welfare of people were, were was excellent, and people lived in uh, in uh, abundance uh, in terms of uh, comfort and in terms of availability of food and security and so on. Um, to the extent that if if there was someone uh, poor or begging that was something completely out of the ordinary uh, and uh, of course in the uh, translation of this there are many um, um, references have been given and uh, uh, reports and statistics have been provided um, to show what is uh, to compare it with today's economic performance and the economic performance at the time of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Um, the author begins by saying how significantly important economic is to, to a country. It goes without saying. And uh, the greater the performance of, of the economy and the, the soundness of the economy, the greater will be stability, political stability in the country. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, this was such at the time of Imam Ali that uh, you could you could say that there was no poverty uh, at the time of Imam Ali, or at least Imam Ali did not know of. Mm -hmm. uh, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, um, Absolute uh, no poverty, um, in, like zero in, poverty. In z zero poverty. In in it is reported that one day Imam Ali Ali Salam was like his normal. He used to walk in the streets and the marketplaces and so mm -hmm. on to make sure at least to see the people, for the people to see him, so that he could in, uh, evaluate uh, and assess the situation uh -huh. uh, from various aspects, whether social, political, or economic. And uh, to his shock and horror, he saw someone who was uh, begging. And uh, so he asked the question, he asked the people around him, uh, uh, what is this? Of course, the Imam, um, the people said to him, to, to his Imam, "Oh, he's a he's a Christian old man. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he he he's, he's grown old and he can't work. Um, and of course, he doesn't have a means to earn uh, a means to a living other than begging." Mm -hmm. Imam was very angry, very angry, and he was really angered by the by what he saw, and he was angered by the reply. He said he used him when he was young. And now that he's grown old, you uh, abandon him. <coughs> and therefore, what Imam did, what Imam Ali alayhi salam did, was to uh, uh, assign a salary for him from Bayt al Mal, Bayt al Mal Muslimin, the treasury uh, of the Muslim, so that he could live in a dignified manner. Uh, the issue, the point is that this was uh, uh, an exceptional uh, situation in the sense that. 
there were never any reports after that or before that uh, uh, during the reign of Imam Ali alayhi salam that uh, there were people in such a dire situation in, uh, that they had to resort to begging uh, uh, from others in order to make ends meet. Uh, this goes to show the status of the uh, the welfare of the people, the status of the people, status of the economy, and the state that people lived. Mm -hmm. um, they did not have uh, poverty uh, in a sense that people had to. There were people who were poorer than others, mm -hmm. um, but there weren't people who had to resort to big uh, begging uh, like this uh, old man, which was an exception. Of course, immediately Imam Ali alayhi salam assigned salary for him from Beit al mm -hmm. um, This reflects on the success of the economy during the reign of Imam Ali alayhi salam, which of course that economy was based on the teachings of Islam and economics. Um, the author later on, uh, of course we'll, we'll talk, go along this, um, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about the, the, the specific policies that uh, Imam Ali Mm -hmm. salam, or the teachings of Islam has on politics, on, on economics. Mm -hmm. But we'll talk about some of the events in here uh, and then we'll, resort, we'll talk about the actual uh, policies uh, uh, of Islam mm -hmm. which Imam Ali implemented. Um, I, as you know, Imam Ali salam, made sure that there is no waste and no abuse of authority or power and no abuse of the services uh, and and uh, the funds, public funds in, in any way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he um, will talk about when, how he treated, how he, what he expected from his governors that he appointed, uh, those governors that he appointed uh, in, in different parts of the, of the country. Um, he expected them to make sure that they don't abuse anything in any way, especially the public fund, uh, let alone the, 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 the power. But Imam Ali alayhi salam, uh, he would live, that's another policy, which hopefully, well, in the future, hopefully people, mm -hmm. the leaders would live, uh, would uh, use this, this teaching of, the, of, of Imam Ali. He used to live like the poorest in the land. And we did touch upon that earlier in, 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 in earlier episodes um, and he, he used to say just in case just in case so he wasn't aware of any but mm -hmm. just in case there were individuals in the Hijaz or the Yamama this in distant parts from uh, in, in uh, uh, from from Kufa where which was the capital mm -hmm that there are people who may uh, not have enough to eat, just in case. He wasn't aware of any such cases, uh, but he used to live, he used to uh, eat the minimum. He used to he eat two pieces of bread, or two qurs, as they say, uh, of bread uh, during the day. Uh, presumably one piece during the day and one piece during the night, uh, at night time. Um, he used to li make sure that he lived like the poorest possible in the land uh, and expected his governors to do something similar to that. Mm -hmm. Although he said, you can't do what I do, make sure that you uh, make your uh, best, do your best, uh, and your best endeavor, and um, make sure you observe piety in the process. Mm -hmm. um, so. I want, I want to stress, just like the author stresses, is that Imam Ali used to live like the poorest in the land and uh, uh, to make sure that there is no wastage of public fund as a result. And the leaders, these leaders of, of Islamic countries, and of course uh, this applies to uh, decent leaders of non-Islamic countries, that they should abide by these teachings and live like the poorest uh, so that they can feel how the poor uh, feels mm -hmm. and live. And of course, in the, also, they would cut down on, 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 the, on the expenditure of the head of state, uh, head of state and people like him. Uh, as for dying of hunger, this has never been reported in the history of uh, Islam 
uh, the, the, the writers and the history of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, or the history of uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam. Mm -hmm. um, so, to sum up, to summarize, um, there was one and no more than one case of in the during the reign of Imam Ali that someone was begging, which of course Imam Ali uh, was angered by, and he sh made sure that this individual uh, lives a decent life. Uh, and Imam Ali lived like the poorest that you could have in the country. Mm -hmm. um, now, in, in, in various stages, or in, in from after Rasulullah, uh, as you just mentioned, the, the, the correct uh, governments, if you will, we want to touch upon. Uh, the author also mentions in this book uh, something revolving around um, what happened in Africa mm -hmm. and how that also, I mean, right now, Africa is considered one of the richest continents uh, in the world. In terms uh, of minerals, yes. In terms of minerals. But uh, the poorest in terms of... And, and poorest in, in, in terms of... The people. Uh, the, the people and the poverty rate uh, increasing yeah. uh, by, by the hour, if you mm. will. Uh, many people are dying. Was it the same during the time of Ali ibn Talib? Was it the same during the time of uh, Prophet Muhammad? Because he is sent for mankind, not just for yes. the Arabs. Yes. Uh, during the Islamic era, during Imam Ali and um, afterwards when um, basically the, some of the economic teachings of, uh, of Islam were being exercised and uh, implemented. Uh, as the author uh, states here, I, I would like to, uh, inshallah, I'll come to some of the teachings of or the policies that he had in encouraging people to work, but mm -hmm. now that you've raised this, um, that it is stated that they used to bring the collection, the tax collected, or the khums or zakah, mm -hmm. which is collected, um, and uh, uh, to, to be given. And they used to say, distribute it. They didn't, they say, distribute it among the poor in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. And they said, we did. And there were no poor. He said, okay, leave the money there and tell people whoever needed, they should come and take the money from here as they, as they need. Uh, which, of course, even that didn't happen because People were well off. People, they had their own means of earning, which is basically farming uh, and various other trades, uh, to the extent that there were no poverty at all in, in, in the parts of Africa which was under the reign of the, if you like, the then Islamic government. Um, this goes to show that, to your question, which did uh, the economic policies succeed at that time? And we, we say, ind indeed, uh, the Islamic um, economic policies uh, succeeded then, and if if this is if these policies are applied today, we will get the same results. Mm -hmm. We will get the same results in the sense that eliminates uh, poverty completely. These policies uh, or the the, the 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 teaching of Islam eliminated uh, poverty completely wherever they are applied, whether it's in Africa, Asia, or uh, any part, any other uh, any other continent. Uh, we'll come to the policies. Uh, shortly, inshallah. But it is sad that uh, um, almost none of the economic policies of Islam are implemented today. Mm -hmm. uh, well, of course, not only in non-Islamic countries, but even in Islamic countries, uh, they are not implemented, which inshallah will come to. Um, um, can I come back to the to to an event which is presented? Mm -hmm. Inshallah, we will get the chance, but after the short break, if you want, inshallah, inshallah. respected viewers, do stay tuned for inshallah, we'll go to a short break and come back to discuss economics within Islam. That's after the break, stay tuned. A brief biography of the eminent Islamic authority, Grand Ayatollah. Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi. He was born on the 20th of the Hijjah in the year 1360 after Hijrah in the holy city of Karbala, Iraq. He was raised and cultured in a family that was renowned for its history of learning, striving, sacrifice and morals. He received his specialist education of Islamic sciences at the hands of eminent scholars of the Hausa 
until he acquired a distinguished degree of ijtihad. Through his relentless endeavors, he developed himself in the quality of continually seeking knowledge along with unremitting observance of piety. Tirelessly promoting the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them, disseminating their culture and defending their sacred laws and sharia. He has written numerous works in various fields on different levels, ranging from politics, economics, history and ethics, to specialist works of Fahawza students on such topics as fiqh and usul, which is also known as jurisprudence, that total more than 80. Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi has been teaching at the Hawza for more than 40 years. He is distinguished for being accessible to the people, directly dealing and meeting with various sectors of members of society, listening to diverse views from different spectrum of the community. Equally, he is distinguished for his humility respecting the young and old, and also for his tolerance in regarding to insult or evil with kindness and courteousness. He is renowned for his independence and for his policy of boycotting despotic governments. He over-observes hundreds of organizations and institutions throughout the globe, for example, those that address social issues such as marriage services and social reforms, those that address humanitarian matters such as clinics, orphanages, financial organizations giving interest-free loans, intellectual institutions such as centers for research and studies, seminaries, houses, libraries, as well as religious centers such as mosques and Husseiniyas. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum once again wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the second part of today's episode where we focused our discussion around economics within Islamic politics. This was discussed with my dear guest, Dr. Zuhair. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Allah khalikum. Now, before the break, uh, we touched upon various um, aspects within Islamic uh, economics, and you did mention how such economics, um, if you will, succeeded uh, in Islam. Now, we did mention about Africa and what happened in Hejaz, uh, and the way that Ali ibn Talib dealt and afterwards. Uh, you, before the break, you want to mention an incident, I believe? Yeah. Um, yes, I, basically what we've covered so far is that of, of events and cases uh, of how Imam Ali, uh, when he saw mm -hmm. Uh, if you like the case of the of that individual seeking money from people, or yes. the case of Africa, and so on. Um, I would like to touch upon an uh, an event that uh, took place and is presented here in the book, mm -hmm. uh, which has got uh, a number of uh, points which we can uh, uh, address, sort of talk about. Uh, it's reported that um, uh, some of these. Uh, freed men, if you like, th those that is the non-Arabs who were brought to Kufa and then uh, certain times they were set free and they were freed individuals, but they s decided to stay in Kufa. But of course, as I said, they, they were non-Arabs. They came to Imam Ali salam and complained that um, these Arabs, when we go and seek to marry their daughters, they would not allow us to do that. Uh, this was at the time when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa uh, uh, arranged that uh, Salman, who was a Persian, uh, was uh, was married to Arabs. Bilal, who was a, uh, an African slave, a black African, he was uh, the Prophet stood for him so that he could marry uh, an Arab woman and uh, also Suhaib. Uh, but these Arabs uh, today they refuse to allow us to marry their daughters, and uh, so basically they asked him to come and intercede, basically to come and help. Uh, to try to convince them uh, of to convince those Arabs so that they, they allow this marriage. So Imam Ali went and talked to them, <coughs> but the Arabs refused. They said, "No, we're not going to do that." So Imam Ali again was sort of annoyed by this, but uh, obviously he couldn't do 
more than that, he said to to these freedmen um, that they are treating you as non-Muslims, as if uh, you were non-Muslims, and uh, they don't, they're not prepared to give them to give you their daughters, even though they marry your daughters. Um, so as a policy, he said, uh, Go and enter into trade and to business and uh, become businessmen and tradesmen so that you become rich and you gain the status. Uh, of course, the, he only tells them to go and to enter into various businesses and trades. And of course, the purpose for that is that so that they could become rich and people would um, would see, would look up to them. Uh, and uh, uh, Imam Ali says, I heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa says, uh, nine-tenths of uh, rizq, of uh, sustenance, is in, in tijara, mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in business. Um, what, what we can derive, we can derive from this uh, events and from this saying of uh, uh, Imam Ali Alayhi Salam, is very significant. The f first of all is that uh, the Imam was, uh, if you like, popular. If people had any needs, they would come uh, to Imam Ali Ali Salam, to Amir al-Mu'mineen, who was the head of state. Even for a trivial, if you like, people might consider it a trivial issue, a trivial issue of, of marrying uh, Arab girls, for example. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, these days you would say, you know, it's, the issue of marriage has nothing to do with me as a head of state, but they used to go to Imam Ali, yes. uh, alayhi salam. And, uh, uh, and they felt confident that in Islam, uh, there should be no problem in, for instance, non-Arabs non -Arabs marrying Arabs, even though the Arabs had still had that uh, uh, discrimination, if you like, yeah, that the mentality. Ra racist mentality uh, and discriminatory mentality. But they, they, the, these non-Arabs who were brought to Kufa, for example, to the Arab lands, and to the Islamic land, they felt confident enough to expect equal treatment. And of course, they had the courage to go, at least not the courage, they had the confidence to go and see Imam Ali because they knew Imam Ali would respond likewise. Uh, and of course, without failure, Imam Ali decided to intervene and, uh, uh, and intercede you know, for the non-Arabs um, to the Arabs. Um, and of course, again, another thing which shows is that the Arabs had uh, the freedom, or at least they felt they could exercise the freedom without fear, refusing the intercession and the request of the head of state in this respect. Um, the most important thing is that, uh, which, is, which concerns if, if like economics, is what Imam Ali said to them. He, he recommended that they should go, have the confidence, even though they are non-Arabs, even though they are, if you like, um, they are looked, up, looked down upon by the Arabs. They should go and enter uh, business, enter trade, and make sure that they also gain the economic status that others have, mm -hmm. which indeed they did. And it states that, states that uh, they, um, uh, they, became, they became rich, and because of their uh, performance and success in economics, in, in, in trade, uh, they gained gradually they gained the status that um, others had mm -hmm. and gradually they managed to, mar to marry um, Arab girls and uh, because they started to look up to them because of, uh, of the, um, um, uh, the trade and the businesses that they were involved in. Mm -hmm. So basically economics raises, if you like, performance and richness raises your status and this is what they did and it goes to show that Imam Ali invited them to do this, and in, in this process he created uh, uh, um, um, harmony between the various races mm -hmm. and uh, the ver various nationalities. Mm -hmm. There were Arabs and non-Arabs, different races and so on. Imam Ali made sure that through economics he, he, he created harmony between yes. them, and of course the, the understanding of the teaching of Islam there is a, that, that there is no um, uh, um, um, discrimination, discrimination between, between the, the people yes. and people are judged by their piety mm -hmm. as, as stated in the Quran yes. uh, and this was actually brought about and, and succeed Imam Ali succeeded in that and the people, the society succeeded in bringing up this harmony between 
its members. Mm -hmm. Now, before we, we have a couple of minutes left uh, before the end of the show, uh, I would like to touch upon this portion of the, of the book where the Prophet states whoever dies and leaves behind um, you know, wealth, it goes to his heirs, it goes to uh, whoever is in his family. And whoever dies and has a debt, I am responsible, the Prophet is responsible for his debt. I mean, the public treasury is going to other people's debts. Um, these are among the, uh, you said a couple of minutes left, uh, these are among the economic policies uh, which we haven't talked about yet among the economic policies which Islam proposes yeah. and Islam uh, the leaders of Islam like the Prophet and Imam Ali salam, implemented mm -hmm. which I'd like to talk in plenty of time I, don't yes. have, I can't sort of talk to, about yeah. them in, in two minutes mm -hmm. I would like in, in the next episode inshallah talk about the uh, economic policies of Islam mm -hmm. uh, these policies were uh, laid down and implemented by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. and of course uh, uh, Imam Ali also saw to those policies and acted according to those policies, mm -hmm. being uh, the divinely appointed successor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So inshallah, if, if, if it's possible that we we'll talk about this in the next episode. I mean, uh, up to you. I, I mean, don't know, how much time do we have? We have approximately a, a couple of minutes left. Uh, so if you can emphasize on the fact uh, since you want to talk about this in the upcoming episodes, uh, if you can emphasize on the fact uh, of everyone is equal within the government of Rasulullah and within the government of Ali, and we saw how everyone uh, became united uh, through the economic uh, revolution, if you will, mm -hmm. how it went from the two, three before Ali, and Imam Ali revolutionized economy Islamic economy to go to a different level where Arabs were favored upon non-Arabs yeah. and they received more yeah. we did mention a couple of stories but in the reign of Ali Abi Talib we still see discrimination in various cases does the author mention such uh, well, uh, if there were discrimination it wasn't by the state or by, not, Ali. Not by it the was states. between indiv yes. individuals and of course uh, th this case of uh, people coming to Imam Ali uh, complaining that uh, Arabs refused to marry their daughters after them uh, it goes to show that there were discrimination that people still had that mentality mm. well isn't and the state responsible for ending discrimination within the society and of course it did in this process as you can see in here that uh, Imam Ali encouraged those uh, freed uh, slaves, if you like, mm -hmm. to go and enter in economics, enter in, in trades and businesses, so that their status is raised, so that, uh, uh, and when that happened, in a way, or in, in a pragmatic way, in a practical way, Imam Ali raised their status and brought about harmony between the various races mm -hmm. um, in Kufa through economics. Okay, so if you like, the state did something about it. Mm -hmm. It's through these subtle teachings, okay, through these subtle teachings, Imam Ali brought about social harmony, okay, and he fought nationalism and he er eradicated nationalism and racism and any any form of discrimination uh, through very subtle uh, uh, policies. One of which is uh, uh, economics, mm -hmm. and as you you mentioned that revolutionized economics, really, it's not the case. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi, or the teachings of Islam are very subtle and very simple. Um, very simple, but if, if you look at uh, the, uh, but the economics to, that was practiced before Ali ibn Talib, I mean, not you know touching upon the Prophet, but after the Prophet, econo Islamic economics went down the drain. Um, well, there was there was a lot of corruption uh, because the those three leaders who ruled after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and before Imam Ali over a period of 25 years they brought about a lot of corruption they, they brought about a lot of racism mm -hmm. uh, so people's mind were filled with racism, discrimination, corruption uh, racism based on uh, various uh, factors whether it's uh, nationality or color or uh, 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 gender and so on um, so um, 
this, uh, th these kind of discrimination really corrupted the minds and souls of the people and corrupted the economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had, uh, uh, without naming names, you had people who, when they died, they left behind uh, uh, um, mounds of uh, gold and yes. silver and uh, or thousands and thousands of cattle for example mm -hmm. whereas people were on the other hand people were dying of thirst and hunger yes one of whom was none other than the one of the beloved companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, abu dhar abu dhar yeah. yeah so we had extreme uh, 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 inequality unfortunately during the reign uh, during the period before Imam Ali and after the Prophet mm -hmm. which was over 25 years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they, they, they were these and people developed or sort of uh, these uh, mentalities uh, uh, cemented in the minds of the people. Yes. And it took time uh, uh, to uh, eliminate these from the minds of the people and the behavior of the people mm -hmm. during the reign of Imam Ali, mm -hmm. which Imam Ali salam, did in a subtle way. Uh, although he requested them, to, uh, to change. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. But those who didn't, uh, they, Imam Ali tried to address them in, a, in an indirect way. Mm -hmm. And that's fully understandable uh, from the side of Ali Talib uh, trying to bring back uh, the Ummah that Prophet Muhammad wished exactly. for uh, in, in, in this matter. Exactly. But uh, inshallah, as you mentioned, we'll continue uh, the discussion uh, of uh, the, the policy of it's social no security yeah. uh, within inshallah. Istanbul, inshallah, in the upcoming episodes. Inshallah. Respective viewers, it's very important to touch upon the facts that Islam was one of the reasons why economics and history developed in a very, very uh, fast way. And uh, if you want to learn how or why this happened, you can tune in and watch every episode of the series to learn about politics in Islam and Islam within politics. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.